everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined as always by our own Gabe Morenci, who's got his six best bets of the weekend, ready for week seven. Coming off a big win on Thursday Night Football. What's happening, Gabe? I'm excited uh, for this weekend's uh, card, Greg. I look at uh, the board, and there's a lot of games uh, that I like, but that does not mean that we're going to absolutely crush it. It's something uh, that I'm going to remind you and r remind myself uh, as well. Um, don't start going crazy and thinking you like uh, one game way more than another game. They're all the same in the end. It's all perception. How many times have we said, man, I love the card this week. There's like seven or eight games that I love. Fast forward to two and six, and you want to put your fist uh, through your television uh, on Sunday night. And how many times have been, man, tricky card this weekend. I really don't like anything. And at the end of the day, you're like, wow, I went seven and two today, and I didn't really even like anything. Perception and reality are two different things, uh, guys, and uh, we have to uh, walk the fine line between the middle. As you can see, we're getting deep off the top uh, here, Greg. But let's jump in with the New York football giants who now been off uh, for 10 days going into this contest against an Arizona Cardinal team who I think are showing their critics that they belong. Cliff Kingsbury's not um, in over his head. Uh, Kyler Murray is um, not only... You know, doing well, he's actually succeeding, and the offense is getting better on a weekly basis. Yes, they get Patrick Peterson uh, back this week, but let us not forget, this is still uh, the 30th-ranked defense in the National Football League, and even though they won the game last week against Atlanta, let us not forget the Falcons put up 444 yards uh, on them. Uh, Danny Dimes has struggled the last couple of games, but, you know, not surprised. I mean, he's taking on a Minnesota Viking team that were in a great spot. We talked about it. And then the New England Patriots, two of the better defenses in the National Football League. Arizona are not one of them. Um, there's not a lot of trends to build on here, guys, to be honest. Listen, the New York Giants have been a terrible home team over the years, but that was with Eli Manning. So you got to throw that out the window. Uh, Danny Dimes is 1-1 one one straight up and against the spread at home. Beat Washington, lost to Minnesota. What we do have, though, is Arizona... Um, coming to the East Coast, it's not going to be, you know, a cold weather game, but it's not a warm weather game either. And as somebody that spends a lot of time at the Meadowlands, it's freaking windy out there, guys. All right, so we have an early kickoff for a West Coast team. And, oh, yeah, Saquon Barkley's back. Uh, Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones hasn't had Barkley to work with ever. He got hurt pretty early in that football game, or at least in the first half uh, going in uh, to, the, uh, to, to, to halftime. Barkley got hurt. Evan Engram is back. Uh, there's a new, there's a new kid uh, in town, and his name is Danny Dimes. And there's a new enthusiasm at MetLife Stadium. Giants win, lay the three. Um, the house of cards comes crumbling down at the swamp. Give me the New York Football Giants minus the points. Giants cut off the long layoff, as Gabe mentioned. Arizona starting to play a little bit better football as of late. Will the Giants' defense be able to stop the seemingly explosive Cardinals' offense? That's what we'll have to find out on Sunday. But, hey, the Giants' offense in general, they can be explosive as well as they get Saquon Barkley and Evan Ingram back on Sunday. Should be a fun one at the Swamp in the Meadowlands. Continuing on with some games, best, best. That brings us to the Houston Texans. Coming off a big win last week against Kansas City. One that gave you and I didn't necessarily predict. I like KC in that one. This week, you're going over to the Houston side of things. You like him as a dog. That's the one thing I really don't like doing besides losing, Greg. <laughs> is, uh, is zigzagging and chasing. You know, you bet on one team one week. You bet against them. and Or you bet against the team and then you bet on them. Uh, but that's where we're at right here uh, with the Houston Texans. If the Houston Texans win this football game, they've turned the corner and are legitimate Super Bowl contenders. Let's just call it out for what it is. They've always been right there, guys. They have the freaking talent. Bill O'Brien, though, is the type of coach that if he coached the Golden State Warriors, he'd tell Steph Curry not to shoot so many threes. We've seen this script before with O'Brien. He can overthink, play not to lose. Seems like this year he's done a nice job of just getting out of the way. And that offensive line starting to come together right now uh, for Houston. And they have a ton of weapons. And to O'Brien's defense, they're actually healthier than they normally are. Houston often dealing with injuries. It's a football team offensively that's starting to come together right now. What a great one-two tandem that they have uh, with Carlos Hyde and with Duke Johnson. Uh, these guys have racked up 665 yards rushing already uh, combined. 
You've got to deal with DeAndre Hopkins. You've got to deal with Will Fuller. Stills are uh, going to be back. And, oh, yeah, Deshaun Watson. Remember Dabo Sweeney said Deshaun Watson is the next Michael Jordan? You know what? I actually kind of believe him. We can talk about Mahomes, and we can talk about all these other young quarterbacks in the National Football League, yet Deshaun Watson is as good as it gets. What I like about this, and you guys know I'm a big trend player, you know, we're sort of going against the trend here. And I like the Colt football team as well. Uh, but the Colts have absolutely owned this series. Whether it was Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck, Houston have just not, have been unable to beat Indianapolis over the years. Colts are 4-1 and one against the spread in their last five. 8-3-1 and one, uh, last 12, so the last four years, including they beat them in the playoffs uh, last year. So in other words, this is a huge revenge spot. It's a big revenge spot. And... Even though Indy is getting healthier, Leonard's going to be back. It looks like Hilton's going to be good to go. I actually don't like teams off of a bye. I you know, I think they're going to be a little rusty. I like the fact that Houston's rolling uh, right now. Houston to put up 84 points, guys, in their last two football games. An explosive offense. I, I, I like the over in this game as well. I, and I know it's a division game. It's going to be a close game. And these two teams have played to the under more often than not. Yet, Houston's offense is next-level stuff uh, right now. And I think the Colts will be able to move the ball on them as well. So, you know what? It's going to be a fun football game. It's a great card this Sunday. But I got to ride the red-hot Houston Texans right now, who are absolutely dominant on the road uh, when getting points uh, as well. 7-2 and two straight up in their last uh, nine road games, uh, guys. 5-0-1 oh, against the spread, uh, Greg, in their last six uh, road games as underdogs. It all adds up to the Houston Texans winning this game and it going over the number. Deshaun Watson is scorching hot right now. Has played himself into the MVP conversation through the first quarter of the season. Let's ride the hot hand. Let's go with that Houston Texans team. And hey, even though these teams have traditionally played to that under, Gabe likes the over 47 points in this matchup. As Gabe said, it's a great card this weekend because it's a great slate of games, which brings us to Seattle and Baltimore from Seattle here this week. Home spread gives Seattle as the favorite by three points. And you're riding the Seahawks and Brian Schottenheimer. How come? Well, you remember last week. Can we just replay uh, the video from last week? I think we could do it for Minnesota Viking games uh, too, guys, right? Um, and let me repeat myself. The Seattle Seahawks. I feel. You know, I remember sitting here last week telling you, Seattle Seahawks are 13-1, and one, guys. Their last 14 games against uh, AFC opponents. They've now won nine straight games against AFC opponents. Uh, 13 and one uh, straight up after last week's win against Cleveland, and incidentally, we gave you uh, Seattle last week. Seattle are a strange team that the public don't believe in, and a lot of the sharps and the analytics data guys don't believe in. I, I don't care. You know who I believe in? Russell Wilson. That's who I believe in. And there's something to be said for the fact that they're 14 to one in their last 15 games against teams from the AFC. Unless you have seen Russell Wilson. And unless you've dealt with him extending plays, you're just not prepared for it. You can't prepare uh, for it. He's that good. And this is as good a football as Russell Wilson's ever played in his career. What's interesting about the Seahawks is, surprisingly enough, guys, they're 0-4 against the spread, their last four home games in front of the 12th man, which is actually surprising, one of the tougher places uh, in the league to play. As well, Harbaugh's a great dog, unlike his brother, Jim. Uh, John gets it done, 5-1 and one against the spread the last six when getting points on the highway. These two teams are very similar, uh, yet I think the number's a little bit short. I think this number's just a little bit uh, short. I think Seattle is going to be able to have success throwing the football on Baltimore. Everybody else is, and Russell Wilson and company will be no different. This is a special Seattle football team right now. And the fact that they have not taken advantage of their home field, I think will have them even more focused uh, here in this spot. There's going to be points in this game as well. All right? I think this is going to be one of these whoever has the ball last wins type of deals. But ultimately, I think Seattle will get it done. But the Ravens are averaging 30 points a game, guys. Um, Seattle are putting up a very impressive 27, and their offense is getting better on a weekly basis as they get a healthier Man, 49's a manageable number here. We're going to go over the number. You know all the fantasy guys are talking about Lamar and Russ this week. So that means us betting guys have to talk about the over in this game. Give me the Seattle Seahawks to improve to 6-1. and one. Cover the number again against an AFC team, and it goes over the number as well.
Seattle doing their thing at home against that AFC team. Going over with Lamar Jackson and Russell Wilson having a battle potentially for the ages in Seattle on Sunday. Game all over the Seahawks. One final game that we want to bring up, and it's very simple. It's Gabe continuing to ride the hot hand. Teddy Bridgewater, all he does is win consistently. And yet, once again, an underdog on the road, this time in Chicago, a team off a of bye. We don't not, are not totally sure who the quarterback will be, but I don't know that it matters for Chicago, whether it's Mitchell Trubisky or it's Chase Daniel. I get it. It's that vaunted Bears defense. But hey, Teddy Bridgewater is a winner, Gabe. Yeah, he is, and I'm just trying to make up for the fact that, uh, you know, guys, Teddy Bridgewater once cost me fifty uh, $55,000 for me betting against him. Me betting against him. I was in a million-dollar uh, contest. I would have won $110,000 if the Packers would have beaten the Vikings, uh, except they didn't, and it was for the division title. Teddy Bridgewater beat Aaron Rodgers on a Sunday night, and I learned my lesson not to get in front of Teddy Bridgewater ever again. Teddy Bridgewater, guys, is the greatest quarterback in the history of the National Football League against the point spread. Minimum 15 starts. All right? He's now 27-7 and seven against the spread. 27-7 and seven against the spread. How does he do um, uh, against division uh, teams? 19-2. and two. I mean, Eddie, you look at this guy's numbers. It's just unbelievable. 4-0 and oh right now uh, as a starter. Since he's taken over, the 4-0. Honestly, if Drew Brees has played the last four games, are you going to look at me and guarantee me that they'd be 4-0? You know, this isn't fantasy football. I don't care how many fantasy points Teddy Bridgewater uh, puts up. Teddy Bridgewater puts W's up on the board. The kid's a winner, all right? 27 and freaking 7. Now we get the Chicago Bears. I almost hope it's Trubisky. Is it Daniel? Is it Trubisky? Another team... Coming off a layoff uh, here after their uh, their embarrassment in London against uh, the Raiders, I just can't get in front of the Saints uh, right now. And you know, we we talk about Teddy Bridgewater. Let's dig in a little bit more here, guys. As far as um, the hunt uh, for Red October is concerned, all right. And once again, we talked about this last week. Remember, I said nobody does Halloween better than the Saints. Blah blah blah. Yeah, well, they've now what is it up to? Fifteen straight games. They've won fifteen straight games. In the month of October, these guys. They're 19-1 and one straight up in their last 20 uh, games in the month of October. And I'm getting three and a half points against a pedestrian, less than average Bears offense. And I know the Bears are a good home team. Uh, but if the Bears win, I don't think it's going to be by more than three and a half points. Teddy Bridgewater improves to 28-7 and seven against the spread as a National Football League quarterback. And the Saints come marching in. Give me the Saints. The New Orleans Saints and Teddy Bridgewater is Gabe's choice this week. Once again, Teddy's cost him enough money through the years. Now he's winning some of it back. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Gabe. We appreciate the time and good luck this weekend. Thank you very much, Greg. May the winners be yours. And may the winners be yours as well. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy week seven. And Gabe and I will be back here on Monday to preview Monday Night Football between the Patriots and the Jets. Have an awesome weekend, everybody.